welcome. I'm Lindsay Crane and these are my retro craft dreams. I love vintage calico. Calico in the US refers to a particular style of print as opposed to a fabric and in the 70s and 80s it just it feels really distinct and I just love it. I think it's adorable and I'm wearing it now because I just love it. I also need a new purse and it just so happens that I have kits for not one but two different calico patchwork purses in my kit stash and I thought it would be fun to make them both at the same time and see which one is better, see how their construction is different. They are by the same company, the very same company as the visor I'm wearing right now. Only one is dated, but the packaging is similar, so I think it's safe to assume that they're probably from the same year or, you know, within the span of a couple years. So let me show you the kit and then we will sew up a pair of patchwork purses. So as you see, I have two purse kits here. They are both by yours truly. Um, one of them is dated 1975 um so the other one is probably as well it might be in the paperwork inside we are about to find out so we have the patchwork purse kit and then the large puff purse so let's start with this one i think this one might be a little bit easier to start but we're gonna make both um but i'll warm myself up on here and then we'll figure out how to do the puffs there but we're gonna open them both today right now and see what's what and then we'll decide you know which one's easier which one i like better we're just gonna look over everything and um put my head on straight um so yeah let's get cracking so we have some lovely and very wrinkled patchwork pieces with some beautiful little calicos and here are the wooden bars oh that is small and then we've got some more rectangular pieces and some, oh, we've got this, what, what is that? It's more of a canvas kind of fabric. I'm blanking on what to call it. That's a very tiny bit. We got some polka dot. So this must be the lining and the interfacing. Oh, it's faded. Well, at least it's the lining. <laughs> yeah, that's really faded. Um, okay, well, now I know that that can fade. All right, and then let's get this staple out. This must be the strap. This was the one that was 1975. I'm like reading a scroll here. So this is the pocket. This cute little faux patchwork stuff. It's so cute. I want more of it. Actually might be more of it over there. Pieces for purse number one. And now let's crack into purse number two. Purse number two, a large puff purse. This one has been taking up quite a bit of space in my kit stash for a while, so I'm really excited to use it up. And also, I just do kind of need a purse now. A whole lot more going on in this one. So let's get in here. I don't have to be quite so careful because these staples aren't going through the instructions. Okay. So there's the instructions. Yay, I get more of that. And we have a bit of grow grain, grow grain ribbon and a snap. So there is my stuffing. We have a very large piece. Oh, it's so cute. So this must be the lining on this one. And then we have just some plain muslin, which is the US term muslin. I guess in the UK, this would be, this is what the UK would call calico. But this is what the US calls calico. And in the US, we call this muslin. So then we've got some more long strips. Okay, so I think it's a braided handle. So I think we actually are going to like braid these. We're going to look at the instructions, but oh, it's a yellow gingham. Okay, that's really cute. That's really cute. Okay, ah, come back. And then for our patches, we've got some really pretty things here. Okay, so that's purse number two. 
It's so fun. Oh, I love them. I love it. I love it. Okay. The first thing to do after pressing out 45 year old wrinkles was to trim up all my squares. For the small purse, that meant cutting the nine rectangles in half to measure three and a half inches square, which gave me two identical piles. And for the puff purse, I needed to cut the strips of muslin to four and a quarter inches. I then squared up the top and bottom edges, which I did not film because you get the idea. Then I wanted to arrange my patches. I wanted it to feel random and so was trying really hard not to overthink it. So I simply tried to space out the colors and balance the dark and light hues, as well as the scale of the print. Particularly on the puff purse where there were no repeated fabrics, and I wanted them to feel similar on each side. I also needed to select one for the pocket and chose a sturdy fabric that was also used in the strap. Once I had my arrangement, I made sure to film it not just for you, but so that I could reference it later on as things inevitably got messed up. Now that my pocket was chosen, I could go back and trim the corners for the puffs. Somehow I managed to completely forget about there being a pattern for this, despite looking at the instructions so many times, but I simply centered the smaller muslin square over my five inch calico squares and used that as a guide for how much to trim from the corners at a 45 degree angle, which I eyeballed. Then I could start sewing. First, two pieces from each row, then the third piece for each row. Then I was off to the ironing board to press the seam allowances in opposite directions. And while I was there, I pressed all the straps as indicated by the instructions. There were four in all, one for the small purse and three to be braided for the puff purse. All were to be turned in from the edges and then folded in half. Back at the machine, I put each row of patches together for a basic nine patch. There's one. Oh, isn't that cute? Okay, it's working for me. And again, while I was there, I hemmed the top edge of each of the pockets and did the top stitching on all the straps. Four straps. What's next? Next was to press the seams on the panels so they could be sewn together and the interfacing added. There's a view. And to fold in the edges of the pockets so they could be stitched to the linings. And I think if I put the pocket on that, it'll help hide it a little bit. And then it was time to go to Puffland. Of the three days I spent making both purses, one whole day was devoted to making puffs. Everything about the puffs had me struggling. Pinning was very fiddly. The instructions were somewhat vague and only said to fold A to B, or essentially point to point on the angle I cut from the corner. And then it said, stitch around three sides and you will catch the tuck on all four corners. I, being the overthinking person I am, got hung up trying to figure out how to lay that fold flat in a nice way and pin it in place. Goodness, this is fiddly and dumb. This can't be the right way. <sighs> Otherwise, it's going pretty good though. Eventually, I gave up and let the corners fall where they may. I ended up just pinning the straight edges flush together with the larger ones centered as best as I could and fiddled with the corners at the machine as I approached them. Okay, I think we've got my verdict on which one I like making more. 
Once they were roughly pinned, three sides were stitched, with the fourth left open for stuffing. And then I took a break from the puffs to work on the rod holder for the small purse. The rectangle was first sewn into a tube, pressed and turned, and then each end was folded into the middle with a seam placed where it would allow the rod to fit inside, one on each end, and then it was cut in half. Then it was back to puff land for some fluff and stuff. The 45 year old stuffing needed a lot of fluffing. I also wanted to be sure to stuff the puffs equally, so I did it in a total of three rounds. Fluffing, stuffing, fluffing, fluffing some more. Santa's beard, we are fluffy. I was going to do some kind of trickety trick so that I wasn't sewing too stuffed puffs together at the same time and I thought okay yep here we here we go hello buddy and he's gone okay um all right let's come over here <clears throat> sit ubu so I was going to try to basically sew a row together then stuff them sew it shut sew a row together sew it to this one then stuff them and sew it shut and repeat here and then I would have done the same to the other side and then in theory you know I'd only have I mean I guess I'd still have the two seams to put together but I can't sew the whole row and stuff it in the same way if they're like split up maybe what I can do is just do it turn the the patches sideways and do it this way and then sew it to that and then sew these together and sew it to that and stuff them, etc. Knowing how difficult it would be to sew two stuffed puffs together, I deviated from the instructions here, which would have had me close up all of my calico raviolis at once. And instead, I unstuffed them again so that I could attach and restuff them row by row. Now I'll restuff these and then I can sew up the top edges and then I gotta unstuff the entire next row. Now I need to sew the bottom edge to this one. Okay, squishy little pillows. Calico ravioli. The challenge then became making sure that the stitches holding the puffs closed were hidden inside the new seam. If I were to do it again, I'd probably use a much smaller seam allowance in making the ravioli. <laughs> that one went way wonky. But I guess we still hid the seam, so still works. All right, now before I stuff these, I have to sew it to that. One side done. Take it out. Actually, that would be pretty comfy. So now, this one needs to get joined over here. Nothing to do but to do it. Definitely ungainly. done for now, I went back to straps. The ones for the puff purse needed to be braided, and I needed something to hold it. The friendship bracelet making Lindsay from the 90s really wished she could just pin it to her knee, but of course these were too long, and eventually a suitable chair was found, with some gratification from the fact that the pin I used was one I wore on my coat in the 90s. Once braided, I stitched the ends to hold them together while I sewed on the grosgrain ribbon down the middle. Then I attached the ends of the strap to the sides of the purse, right sides together. I also added the rod holders to the small purse. Then it was time for linings. The linings were both done the same way. With strap or rod holders in between, the top edge was sewn first. 
Then they were opened, though seam pressed, and then folded in half vertically, right sides together, lining to lining, purse to purse. And here I met my fate. It was time to sew two layers of stuffed puffs together, on the side and on the bottom. And let me tell you, it was a workout to keep it in line, especially since my machine won't do a slow start and I need one hand to turn it manually and, oh, it was a struggle. Oh man, I lost Bob and Chicken like ages ago. <laughs> Great. I was so focused on whether or not I was going to win Thread Chicken that I forgot all about the fact that I was also playing Bobbin Chicken. <laughs> this little tunnel. I kind of like that. So this is the way they go together. So I'll pin that and stitch that up real quick. It was a workout. After that, the small purse was a breeze. It called for squared corners, for which I folded the side to the bottom and sewed a line perpendicular to the bottom seam. The corners got clipped, thumbs away, and then I got the satisfaction of turning both purses. The bottoms of both linings got turned in and pressed and just got top stitched shut. Then all that remained was to put in the strap and sew on a snap. After some experimenting, I decided I did not like a knot in the small purse strap. So while I was putting the snap in the puff purse, I decided to add two snaps to close the strap of the small purse. I may alter this in the future, but I definitely prefer the braided strap. And with that, I have two adorable, amazing 70s patchwork purses. I love them so much. Don't you? Aren't they just so cute? They're so bright and colorful and just lovely and I love them and I'm really glad you joined me on this little purse making adventure. Tell me what you thought of these lovely patchwork purses. Of course, these are from kits, but they're really pretty basic. I hope you feel inspired to maybe make your own with some scraps that you might have at hand. If you haven't subscribed, feel free to do that now so that you can catch my future videos. I like to make all manner of 70s and 80s crafts, and I think it's a really fun ride. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, happy crafting, and I'll see you next time. See, I, oops, as you see, I have a tiny table that I can't even fit my arms on. He found a box. I finally get the cat to join us, but all he does is make noise and you still can't see him. <laughs> It's, wow, it's literally just cut from a package. That's funny. <laughs> he won't come and then he won't leave. They look like little eggs. You can say hi to these people. Say hi up here. <laughs>